Hello everyone and welcome to It's Always Sunny in Phoenix, a weekly podcast where we keep you up to date on everything Phoenix Suns basketball. We're recording this episode right after the Jazz game, so we will recap that, and then we'll see what else comes up after that. I'm Charlie, I have David and Mitch with me. What's up guys? You know, it's been so long since uh, we've podcasted that nothing new has happened whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm actually doing really, really well because I just remembered that you can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Sunny and PHX and find some great t-shirts that say the cheese is warming up or Sunny and PHX podcast phone cases. You know, maybe you need to get your dog a new laptop cover this year. You can do that on this site. So, I mean, just knowing that exists makes me really happy. You know, that that is actually something that is new. Um, it's been getting cold. It's in uh, Arizona. It was a brisk uh, 60 degrees today. <laughs> I, I was cold. I uh, had a jacket on, and it was nice. And you know what jacket I wish I had? It was the... It's always sunny in Phoenix podcast jacket that is up on the store. I wish I had all three of them on me at the same time. The <laughs> one with the orange letters, the one with the purple letter, and then one that said the cheese is warming up. And uh, I wish I had the. It's all. You know what would be awesome? I was just going to make a joke about like having socks, but how sweet would it be if we had socks that had, said that? We don't actually have those on the store, but just saying like that'd be cool. That would be cool. Well, you... we need to get hooked up with stance. Yes. <laughs> yes if anyone from yeah. stance is listening <laughs> um you know, yeah actually um i i'm cool with saying this because i'm 99.9 percent positive that my in-laws do not listen to the show <laughs> but i'm thinking about getting them some matching sunny and phx pod hooded sweatshirts i'm thinking orange with the purple font Ooh, so they stick nice. out, and everybody notices they're wearing a bright orange shirt. I like And then ma maybe they'll ask about it, and they'll say, oh, yeah, my son-in-law does this Phoenix Suns podcast. You should probably check it out. And you, you well, know you what else do. you could do? Oh. You, you could get them two sweatshirts each. So one could be a sweatshirt, and they could wear the other one as pants. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a much better idea than I had. I was just going to say, get one of each color. Get one of the, the, the orange with the purple font, one of the purple with the orange font. Yeah, and, do, like, do that. Purple do pants, that. orange shirt, orange shirt, purple pants, whatever. Mix it up. <laughs> but I, I, I'm really digging the pants idea right now. You know, I yeah. think there's like an actual long sleeve t-shirt, and you should do that for the pants part. And then the jacket with the hoodie. I, and so, I have the long sleeve shirt. It's really nice. I haven't worn it as pants yet, but maybe I'll try it. But it's pretty comfortable <laughs> on your upper torso. So on oh, your legs, it's got, you got to imagine the comfortness there. <laughs> I think so. And if you want to hear more crazy stuff from us, you better follow us on social media. Hit us up on Twitter at Sunny and PHX Pod. Check out the Facebook, Phoenix Suns, multiple sources. Our email is Sunny and PHX Pod at gmail.com. And check out the website at sunnyinphxpod.com. So, yeah, we said we were going to come with a midweek episode sometime in the future. We, we weren't messing around. We're, we're getting it done. So, we just watched the Jazz game. And, you know, it, it wasn't a great start for the Suns. This is something we've been seeing pretty frequently. And uh, the Stifle Tower, Rudy Gobert, he, uh, he was a beast early in this one getting the first bucket of the game after an offensive rebound, and then blocking two consecutive Marquise Chris shots at the rim. So he made his presence known early, and we kind of talked about that last episode too. And so after getting down by 14 in the first quarter and then finding themselves down by 23 at one point in the second, the sun started to come back to life a little bit. Shots started to fall, and then... We put together a few little mini runs, and the Suns were able to chip it down to 11 points towards the beginning of that fourth quarter after a nice 8-0 run. And this fourth quarter run was mainly thanks to the duo of Brandon Knight and Leandro Barbosa. But before we uh, get into that final score, 112 Jazz, 105 Suns. So... 
after getting smoked by the Warriors last game, it was really nice to see the team come back, show some fight, man up, and uh, get like really just claw back into this game. So big shout out to the bench for that one. What do you guys think? Yeah, you know, it is nice to have a game that ended up being close. So something that we have had a lot of these kind of close games that um, have gone on. I think if you're going to say, oh, we went on this run, normal people would look at our roster and probably think of it as our starters plus or like Brandon Knight or something or Jared Dudley. I don't think a lot of people that would casually watch would think that, oh, you know, your your run is going to be spurred off by a lineup of Brandon Knight, Leandro Barbosa, Dragon Bender, Jared Dudley, and Tyson Chandler. Um, I know I didn't think that. I did not expect that. Um, it kept on kind of going, and I kept on... I, I'm not going to say that I was waiting for like the shoe to drop, but I was waiting for the shoe to drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, I mean, like this run was had some very interesting looks. We had uh, Leandro Barbosa on Gordon Hayward a lot. Um, we had lots of Brandon Knight rebounds. We had no scoring by Tyson, which is a thing. And just a lot of stuff. So uh, it, it was an interesting run, and uh, it made the game actually fun. So that's nice. Yeah. I, all of that stuff is, um, you know, really important about the game. Uh, it, it was one of those where a lot of people might have turned it off in the first half. I know I almost contemplated it. Um, and I just remember saying, wow, we're really bad. Uh, as we were down by 20 points around halftime. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that we fought back. Um, and the Jazz, they're, they're not... A slouch team at all they're good and they had uh, quite a few guys who were out with injuries so um it, it was nice to get to watch them and uh some you know it's it's looking like they're still gonna have the opportunity to do that yeah yeah and these runs that we've been seeing um i took a couple notes during the game tonight and in the second quarter we came out hot and Leandro Barbosa scored six quick points. And then to start the next quarter, Booker came out real hot with five points. And then in the fourth quarter, I believe it was, uh, was it Knight? Again? Yeah, Knight had the hot start to the fourth. And that's when we went on that 8-0 run and got things back close. So, you know, we, we keep seeing these little mini runs, even just kind of started off by one player and man i i just really like to see the team be able to keep that up when when we have one guy up we need a second guy to be able to come up and hit a shot too and that seems like something we've been missing a little bit um it, it was good to see those guys get hot but at the same time it's really tough uh, streak is coming to an end and toward the end of the game that was an issue because Brandon Knight had been playing entirely and failed uh he had a couple late turnovers that were no after uh, a timeout break Watson left that lineup out uh, that things started to fall apart a little bit um it's it was also was having a, a pretty efficient game as he was nine for 13 with 20 him but at the same time this this weird lineup were working for about four minutes i don't really know why but you know it's just hard spurt gonna last that kind of stuff so i i know this is kind of a dumb question but uh you were talking about how it's hard sometimes to figure out when you're supposed to take a lineup out is it really that hard to know when you're supposed to take up lineup take up a take a lineup out like I, I don't know. I was saying that I, I was kind of waiting for the shoe to drop. And while our bench has at times, like tonight, totally outscored our starting lineup, 
and uh, played really strong. I don't think very many successful teams ever end the game with their entire bench out on the floor, just about. Um, and I mean, when that bench is guys like, you know, Barbosa's old, Jared Dudley's a little older, Tyson Chandler is a little older, uh, Bender is a rookie, and Brandon Knight has had a history of kind of giving away opportunities to either win or take a lead multiple times throughout his career. So, I mean, it, it's interesting and it's interesting to kind of look at and see like, is it hard to figure out when to do that? Or when you're playing your entire bench, should you start throwing in some of those starters? The other thing is, I mean, I don't know if it's too early to say this, if it's a little before, are we tanking? Yeah, I don't know if we can quite say the tank is up and running quite yet, but, you know, it, it sure kind of looks like that. But here's my whole thing about the whole lineup situation, and can you take a guy out? Brandon Knight, he's got to be the streakiest player in the NBA. Um, when I was watching tonight... You, you saw him just blow by his defender and get to the paint and be able to finish at the rim a few times. And I was thinking to myself, this guy looks like one of the better players in the NBA and one of the worst players in the NBA, like even within the same quarter of the game. It's, it's just, he's so touchy. And it seems like we, he was up and going in this fourth quarter and, like, put yourself in Watson's shoes. You already demoted the guy from the starting lineup. You He's not getting the minutes he has been getting in the past. And do you, like, do you want to mess with Knight's head like that and yank him while he's playing well? I can, I can see why Knight might be a tough one to uh, deal with in that situation, but... In the other case, I think you could have ripped Barbosa out of there for either Bledsoe or Booker, preferably Booker, who had the hotter hand tonight. But I can see where pulling Knight while he's looking pretty good, I could see why that'd be a kind of an issue. I mean, it could be an issue. I kind of, I kind of felt like I was just going to end up seeing Knight in there because he was playing kind of decently and I was expecting Tyson Chandler to kind of be pulled out we weren't really re like we were rebounding but we weren't really like blocking out and he wasn't really blocking out that much anyways we were kind of getting it because the Jazz were getting back on defense so I kind of was expecting for us to go small with either Dudley or Bender at center and the other one playing power forward basically is the those is our two bigs and throwing in either Booker or Bledsoe but you took Knight out of the starting lineup for Devin Booker. Devin Booker, while, I mean, he was hot. He missed five shots the entire game. He was 8 of 13 or 9 of 13? Four. 9 of 13. 9 of 13. Yeah, he was 9 of 13. Um, yeah, I mean, he he wasn't that good defensively if you look at, like, his defensive stats. But so was like almost no one i mean our bench was a plus a plus because we were able to go on that run um i don't, I don't know i feel like if knight really is all about being in that bench role as earl watson you have to be like look you did great you got us back in this but we're putting in the guy that we set you for we put you on our bench because of this guy we're going to put him in the game he's been efficient as hell he can play just as good of defense as you've been playing because let's not pretend like knight was really <laughs> locking down on defense in the end of that game it, Devin, that's fair that's Devin fair. booker would not have <laughs> impacted the defensive game at all no right he he was minus 26 a team worse minus 26 booker and i know what yeah. plus minus all of that but still yeah i mean this is where you question plus or minus um, and where you have to kind of understand the context of these stats. 
which I think is really hard for a lot of people to do. And where when you're kind of using these stats and trying to find the context with them, it can seem like you're really cherry picking, which is always a popular thing in basketball discussions where you see stats of like, oh, Giannis Atentacumpo is the only person putting up, what is it? It's 20, 22 and a half, 22.6, 8, hmm. 6, 3, and 2 or something like that, I think is what it is. Yeah. Um. So, like, and that seems like it's cherry picked, and it kind of is. But at the same time, then you look at other stats, and a plus or minus is not an indicator of how someone played. You can see how the team played, but you're not really going to know about a plus or minus. You're not going to say you're. What you can tell from the plus or minus is they got when they were on the floor, the team got outscored by this many points. And, I mean, like, yeah, so when Devin Booker was on the floor, whoever he was with, the team got scored, out, got, got outscored by 26 points. Some of those was playing with Brandon Knight. Some of those minutes were playing with Eric Bledsoe in the backcourt. Eric Bledsoe had a minus 18, which he had time sharing with Knight in the backcourt, who was at a plus 12. Um, you had Jared Dudley on the floor. You had... um. I I mean, what, did Devin Booker have any minutes where P.J. Tucker was not in the game with him? Not really, I don't think. I'm going to throw... I mean, I'm kind of just kind of going off here. We we didn't play well, and we really didn't play well until the third quarter. And I, I mean, it, it's just so tough. I'm trying to kind of just pull through and see some of the lineups that Booker played with, but I'm not having that much luck. <laughs> right. No, it, it all makes sense. Um, and I mean, I do think that it's really important to talk about PJ Tucker a little bit too, because he did not have Ooh. a good game. Can I read his stat line? Yes. I want to read his stat you line. Did, you get it, buddy. Yeah. Zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, one steal, two turnovers, 21 minutes. That is about 20 too many minutes. For that yes. stat line. Right and now, there. can you read Gordon Hayward's stat line to make us feel even worse? Oh, I can absolutely do that. <laughs> 28 points, 5 boards, 4 assists, 3 steals, 1 turnover in 36 minutes. So, you know, we always hear this stuff about Gordon Hayward being a son someday. We've been teased with that over the last years or whatever, trying to make trades for him, hoping to land him in free agency, but... Man, he just seems to burn us every time we play them. And I think that's a I think we should talk about the Utah Jazz a little bit. I they are a good team and this is without George Hill, uh Alec Burks and Derek Favors. They're missing their starting one and four and they they handed it to us pretty good aside from this fourth quarter tonight. So I'm impressed with the Jazz. Can, what, can we talk about how Gordon Hayward is what every white guy with a hipster haircut, what they think, what they want to look like is Gordon Hayward? Dude, Gordon Hayward, professional NBA player, and I think he's like a professional League of Legends player as well. So like that he's or got WoW, the, yeah. Oh, is he? Like he's yeah, really so, into like League wow. or WoW. I, can't, I think it's League. I think it's League, yeah. So he's got like the nerd, the <laughs> strong nerd game. The obviously strong basketball game. And one other thing about him, he is jacked compared yes. to what he was coming into the league. He was so yeah, skinny. I was surprised. And if you look at him now, he's like his shoulders are thick. His arms are big. He's he's filled out quite well. He has that pro body and he's really having a nice season this year. And let's be real here. His wife is also a dime. Like I, I can believe that. <laughs> like the, I might have to look that up right now. The dude has it all, and like he has come from just like random white player that plays in Utah to a dude that probably is going to be an all star this year, and like looks like a real like athlete. I and his hair game is on point. And uh, I want to know how it stays like that for an entire game because I start to sweat a little bit and my hair goes 
all awful. So, I mean, like, I, I want to know that. And, like, okay, hold on. Like, Chuck may or may not have just looked up a picture of Gordon Hayward's <laughs> wife. And I'm going to call him out a little bit. Because the picture he took, <laughs> he picked out, was one with her hair all back and with sunglasses on. And, like, sunlight but... and stuff. Which, like, I'm, I'm ta saying, with all this... Like, you picked a terrible picture, but at the same time, like, still a dime. I don't see what's <laughs> terrible about that picture at all. <laughs> I really don't. No, there's nothing. I just want to be crap. <laughs> all right. So now that we're getting a little awkward here, how do we move on from this? We talk about how I wish that Joe Johnson and Boris Diaw were in Suns uniforms right now. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> just like the good old days, huh? J just imagine us going out with a lineup. Uh, it could either be the AARP lineup or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But of Leandro Barbosa starting at the point with Joe Johnson, uh, Jared Dudley, Boris Diaw, and Tyson Chandler. And that just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Well, you could have that. And then it would just be like a renaissance of <laughs> old... Like, as in former and old in age, son. So, we all saw the video of Amari in the Israeli league just completely truck a defender on a pick. <laughs> Knocked that dude out. And, and apparently it's because he's so much bigger than everybody in the league. <laughs> yes. he, it's kind of like the Shaq effect, and they just everyone just hammers on him. So, he had to get a little, a little back there, is how that looked. I mean, there's a reason why NBA players go overseas and make millions and millions of dollars. Michael Beasley just won, like, Chinese League MVP again. Yeah. Like, um, those guys, even when they're super old and can barely move by NBA standards, can still destroy people at basketball. <laughs> and That's fair. Now, I really just want that lineup. And to see them, like running out with their walkers on the court, like, talking with the Golden Grannies during timeout breaks, so, like, <laughs> spitting some game, like, it'd be, it'd be pretty great. Well, and I've noticed a lot of people still wear the jerseys from that era to the games quite a bit. They could just run into the stands and grab one of those. <laughs> Swipe a couple jerseys put it on. <laughs> sure. I, just trade not? them. I don't think there would be a single fan that would be like, no. No. Yeah. That's not okay. I'd, I'd be down. I would do it. I'd be like, hey, yeah, do it. Can you also, like, <laughs> sweat a little extra in it for me? Because that'd be great. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I just said that. Anyway, I don't care. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, awkward uh, enough. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been pretty awkward tonight. Let's, let's start a... Uh, getting to this here. Let's talk a little bit more about the Suns, just kind of how the the road of the game goes and how things have been looking for us lately. It seems like the Suns start off the game, they get down big, and then we see these little micro runs, and it gets our hopes up. We see a guy like Devin Booker go off for eight points in a row, we get some momentum, and then it seems just to get shot down. And what what can you guys attribute this to, and what's it going to take to get over that hump for us to take some victories home? Well, I think a lot of it is growing pains. With a young team, it's going to be hard to find a lot of consistency, and you're going to see a lot of these runs where things click for, you know, two, three, four minutes, like we saw tonight. Um, I mean, the other part of, of the run that happened tonight in the fourth quarter was that the Jazz just didn't make a shot for like eight and a half minutes. So that, uh, you know, that's not really anything that we're doing. Um, they were just, you know, not taking the best shots. That wasn't really helping them. Um, but I, I mean, I do, I think it's growing pains. Um, I think it's, there's a lot of chemistry issues and just a lot of inexperience. Yeah, um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that go that you, as a fan, kind of goes through 
Um, it's almost like the like what is it the five stages of grief <laughs> you you kind of go through as a fan like especially when you're a hardcore fan which I think most of the people that listen to these pods are when you're a hardcore fan you kind of go through these stages of, of grief when your team loses even if they're not supposed to be good I mean like it, you still kind of go through this stuff when, when I'm watching this game and I'm watching it and we go on this run and our bench is in, I feel like you have to start kind of putting starters in and start letting them in and try to get them into that rhythm as well. Because you're not going to win with a bench. I, I I just don't think you are. You can win with your bench scoring a lot, but you're not going to close out a game with your bench and win. Um, I don't know if there are stats. Like, there are probably stats on that, and I think that most of the time that's right. So, I mean... You got you kind of you kind of got to question it. You got you got to question some of the stuff that's going on. You're gonna jump out and lash out at some of the coaching. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna talk about how Booker and Bled were not in to close the game at all, and how they should probably have been. You're gonna talk about how PJ Tucker has not looked good at all this season. I mean, he has looked okay at times, and he has played pretty good. We talked about in that Atlanta game, he played good. He, a couple games here and there. But for the majority of the season, he has not looked like his normal self. And his defense hasn't been there. You look at guys like... You look at the young guys, and you look that even in garbage time, we didn't give Alan Williams or Tyler Uless any time. And maybe even if it was garbage time, we should have tried to go on a run with them. If those guys were in and we go on a run, does Watson leave them in, or does he take them out? And is it just kind of because these are some veterans guys that have had the runtime that he kept them in? Or, you know, or is it a stealth tanking move? These are just things that you kind of go through as a fan. Um, a lot of them are very reactionary. And after a couple of, maybe a night or maybe even after thinking about it for a while, a lot of them just get thrown by and you give up on them because you know that you're just being reactionary. But uh, it's tough. It's tough, especially when you're tied you get to a point where you're tired and then you watch a turnover when someone's trying to play hero ball and a really bad shot. And like, it, it's frustrating because like as a fan that's watched Brandon Knight, you feel like you've seen that you've seen the song and dance. And there was a lot of it was last year and you saw a lot of this last year and you start freaking out. Like, Oh, are we, gonna start stealth tanking like already into the season and you start freaking out a little bit and even though you're a young team and all this stuff like it's you just go through all this stuff and like it's frustrating yes. it's disappointing but at the same time like you gotta you gotta yeah. remember about the marathon hey if we're gonna start tanking though can we at least get Derek jones jr some time because that dude flies. Yeah. That dude flies. He reminds me a bit oh of Gerald. Gosh. You got it. Like, I have a sp I have a soft spot for Gerald, but that would be cool. I think Derek reminds me a bit of him. We've seen some really cool dunks out of him in the D League with the Northern Arizona Suns. So, I'd like to see him uh, suit up in yes. an NBA game, get some time to fly, just just a little bit in the fourth quarter or something, just something. You gotta do that and you gotta also be like if we're gonna start tanking already can we like please just get more nights where we're playing bender 28 minutes and maybe try to get him into a little bit of a better rhythm i love that dude you guys know that like i'm on, i'm really high on him and i'm on the bandwagon but like how unfair is it to have him be in no rhythm whatsoever playing like really hard and all this stuff and then for the last two possessions of the game quickly throw it to him while you're trying to play hero ball and tell him to try to make a shot. Like, come on. Like it just, I, I felt bad for the guy and I want to see him play more and get into more of a rhythm because I love him. Totally. And he got in, in the first quarter tonight. So that was a good sign. I, I like to see him get in early, whether it's for Tucker who are whoever's playing the three or Chris, I just like seeing him in there early, getting him, those minutes against the uh, like starting competition and not the end of the bench. Yeah, and I mean, like he got some of that starting competition to end out the game, like a uh, like a normal team that plays their starters at the end of a game. Uh, and he <laughs> yes, also played he eleven more minutes than Chris tonight. Chris played seventeen. Bender played twenty eight. 
And just, I feel like I have to throw this in here because I feel like an old man, but Marquise Chris with another technical foul tonight. He's got to, he's got to reel that in. We don't need a uh, third distant Morris cousin relative on the team. Uh, every once, every once in a while, I start to be like, oh no, is our, our is this our, like we use that and use that Washington pick to get a young player. Does he end up becoming a Morris? Please don't let this happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. I do not like hearing that, but it's, it's. Hey, we're, I was just talking ugh. about, I was just talking Scary about reactions stuff. and stuff that you have way too much at the end of a game. <laughs> this is where my mind goes. Yeah. You're welcome. There you go. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. And I think we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, nice little quick midweek episode for you guys maybe we'll keep doing this in the future if we get the views and the listens i don't see why we won't keep it up so yeah let, let us know if you like this like tweet at us definitely here i'll give you the social media info right now if you want to do it and, and then i'll and then i'll say goodbye how does that sound twitter at sunny and phx pod facebook phoenix suns multiple sources Email sunny in phxpod at gmail.com and check out the website at sunny in phxpod.com and the entire multiple sources blog and podcast network. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Go, Suns. Oh, yeah.